Welcome again to the Actors Bow. This is Denise Barastapat, and I am so happy to be recording this because I feel like we haven't talked in ages. Because we actually haven't talked in ages. I am sorry. I am here to apologize. <laughs> Sitting down by the big pile of laundry that I still have to fold because that's me. That is, I'm, I, I suck up at planning. I have lots of things on my plate and you know I just I, I, a week goes by another week goes by and I don't record an episode but here we are a lot of things have happened since the last episode and the last time that we talked if you follow me on TikTok and Instagram you might have been up with the updates if not here are a few updates number one i took new headshots which is very exciting because last time that i took headshot was two years ago and let me tell you something i am not the same person i was two years ago mentally physically anything like that and i had a tummy ache anytime i looked at those two-year-old headshots and thought of the idea of submitting myself with those because I was like, I feel like I am lying to these people, telling them this is what I look like. And not even in a good way. I I think I have evolved in a good way. So to me, it was a little frustrating to not have taken new headshots. So we did that. We went to take new headshots and that's going to be part of this episode. We're going to get to it later, the details on how to take headshots, how my experience was this time compared to other times I've taken headshots and some tips for you guys when you go take headshots. Something else that is coming up is that it's award season. The Oscars are next week. I feel like a year ago um, (laughs) I was recording the Oscars episode and it feels like last week and here we are here we are again in the actors well coaching program we are gonna have a very cool oscars party we're gonna do a contest and see who guesses more winners and yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun listen we haven't had time to talk about the nominations this year i don't have a very big winner in my mind or somebody that I'm like very crazy about the only person I would say that I feel strongly about is Andrew Garfield I love Tick Tick Boom I love Lin-Manuel Miranda I'm very excited to see Lin-Manuel Miranda at the Oscars and the red carpet I do feel very strongly about something else in the Oscars and I just never thought I would see the day honestly I've been recovering from this. <laughs> that is my excuse of why I haven't recorded a podcast episode. I've been mentally recovering from the simple, traumatizing fact that Kristen Stewart has been nominated to an Oscar. I never thought I would see the day. I had joked about it with my friends. I had seen it in my worst nightmares. But it's finally here. It's happening. Listen, I don't have anything against Kristen Stewart as a person. I don't know Kristen Stewart. I don't know. But as an actor, (laughs) I am just going to say disappointed in the Academy. And yes, before you come for me, I have seen lots of her movies. I have seen Spencer, the movie for which she's nominated. I'm going to say this. It is the best thing I've seen Kristen Stewart do. That doesn't mean <clears throat> that it's worthy of an Oscar nomination. I still think it is her with a blonde wig pretending to be Diana in a very stereotypical manner. It kind of seems like she watched an interview and she just repeated the same things again and again. <sighs> I'm not, I'm not going to go more in depth. <clears throat> I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm just going to say if the Oscars day comes... And Kristen Stewart wins an Oscar. I have lost all my faith in the Academy. That is all. Uh, But let's continue. So let's go more in depth with the headshots that we were talking about. I went to take headshots. The first thing that you have to do when you go take headshots is figure out what photographer you want. And there are so many options. When you join the Actors Val Coaching Program, you get a list of photographers that I personally recommend in New York and in LA 
and they are organized by price range. There are so many different price ranges. I'm going to tell you, I understand not everybody has so much money, you know, to invest in those headshots, but headshots is not something you should go cheap on. Headshots are an investment in your career and a very key important part of your marketing as an actor. Why are headshots so important? Well, First of all, they're going to be in casting websites and your social media and all these things that people are going to see way before they even see you in person, right? They have to catch their attention. There are so many headshots out there. So how are you going to stand out? How are you going to make them stop and be like, whoa, this person looks interesting. Second of all, even after they have met you, you go to an audition, you bring them your beautiful printed and stapled resume and headshot. They keep that headshot, right? And once they're making the decision and going through all the people that they've been seeing throughout the day, which might be hundreds, might be thousands in some productions, all they have left of you is a few notes, if any, that they took of your audition and that headshot. A lot of times it comes down to that. A lot of times it comes down to, I don't remember that audition so well. I liked it, but I also like this other one. Oh, look at this headshot. This is interesting. This is mysterious. This makes me want to know more about this person. Okay, I'll go with them. And and, and that's one of the reasons why headshots are so important. Again, other than that's something that you're going to be using for your marketing, for your business cards, for you know your website and all that stuff, which is very important too. So headshots, you have to find the photographer that works for you. While staying in your range, I understand, I understand. Now, there are so many headshot photographers, which one should you choose? I cannot give you an answer to that. There are, in my opinion, better photographers than others. And again, I created a custom list for my students that joined the program. But in the end, there's so many different styles, even in that list. And the headshot photographer that you should choose is the one that aligns with who you are as an actor. Before you ever go take headshots, be very clear on what you want for your headshots. And I'm going to tell you my story so you don't have to make the same error. The first time that I took professional headshots, I took them with David Knowles. If you don't know who David Knowles is, he is one of the best New York City headshot photographers. In my opinion, the best. One of the best headshot photographers in the world. I saw him. I saw his work. He took Lupita Nyong'o's headshots. She looked, oh, oh my God. I mean, the woman is amazing. She's so beautiful. She's a goddess, right? I was like, I want to take headshots with him, which is great. I saved my money. It is a lot of money. It's an investment to take headshots with such a great photographer, but I was willing to make that investment. Now, I had not even graduated. It was my senior year of college and I was like, let's take the headshots, let's get ready. So when I graduate, I am ready to go. David Knowles was amazing. I'm just going to say now, and I'm sure I've said it before in this podcast, that was one of the best days of my life and I am not exaggerating. David Knowles, if you ever listen to this, Taking headshots with you was my best headshot experience ever, hands down. It was like a party. It was, we were there so many hours and he was so much fun making you feel comfortable and giving you direction and, and, and giving you advice. He knows what he's doing, but I was not ready for that. I went to that session with like 10 clothes choices and no idea of what I wanted to portray. I mean, yeah, sure. I was like, I'm an actor combatant. I know how to, you know, fight with swords. Um, You know, I also, um, uh, uh, you know, no idea. <laughs> it was so vague. In the end, I mean, we kind of narrowed it down to like three looks. But in the end, because I didn't know what I was going for, I ended up with very broad headshots very vague headshots that could have served for anything but also didn't serve for anything specific and and that's one of my biggest regrets i wish i had known my type and myself more back then when i took those headshots they came out spectacular anyway I, I, and 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 that's all on david knows and his amazing makeup person um any of the headshots he took could have worked as my main headshot Moving forward, I took other headshots and the the next time that I took 
professional headshots that I used uh, until almost now. I've taken professional headshots four, five times in my life. Um, but one of the next times I had already signed with an agent here in LA. And once you have an agent, they will ask you to take headshots and they will ask you to do very specific things because those are the types they see you as and they want to submit you as. So the problem that time is that I went to a photographer that was not my preferred. It was something that my agent said, go here. That's the first one. Second one, I didn't go with the types that I wanted to go for. I went with the types my agent wanted to go for. And silly me was not gonna tell my agent, well, I don't agree with that. I don't see that. This is what I want to go for. Because back then, I didn't know how to stand up for myself. So I took headshots that did not align with me. <laughs> I had this headshot with this like thick glasses, this very quirky, nerdy character, which is not me. That's not a type I would go for, to be honest. Then I had these headshots that look like a lawyer. And I'm like, Sir, I am 21 years old. I, can't, I could not go for a lawyer role. I do not look like that. I have a child's face. I am 21, but I look like I'm 15. So definitely I would not get cast as a lawyer. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not going to go further with that. You can see that I'm getting emotional about it. By the way, this is a very big and good agency, commercial agency in LA. So... <clears throat> That was it. Those were the headshots that I got. Again, those were headshots that I was not completely happy with. I continued using the David Knowles headshots, even though they didn't look like me anymore because I had dyed my hair with highlights and, you know, I had grown from, uh, you know, 20 to like 22, 23. I continued to use ones because at least those were good headshots and I enjoyed, um, at least it looked more like me. Let's put it like that. Fast forward, pandemic, two years go by, now taking headshots again. It is time to do my own research. I have discovered myself a lot as an actor and as a person through the pandemic. And I want to think that I'm very clear on what I want for myself and my career moving forward. So I found a photographer that I really aligned with and um, he works with a lot of working actors. To me, that that is something important. And I'm not saying that there are not big names that are incredible headshot photographers. But to me, seeing that a photographer works with a lot of current working actors is a good sign. And he works with a lot of big agents this year in LA. And to me, that is, well, the people who are getting work are here. So he knows what he's doing. He knows what the industry wants. He knows what's up. I ended up going with Paul Smith, if you want to look him up. He is a headshot photographer in LA. He has taken headshots of Rami Malek, which I love. He has taken um, headshots of Jenna Fisher, a bunch of like great actors. That is not what was the main deciding factor for me. The main deciding factor is that I liked his style. And that's what I want to touch upon. As I said, there are so many different headshot photographers with so many different styles. There were other great headshot photographers out there. But I went with the one that looked like and made people look like the way that I wanted to look like as an actor, the way that I wanted to market myself, right? There's so many ways to market a product and you have to go with the artist that aligns with your artist values. That's how you're going to choose a headshot photographer. Now, you cannot do that unless you truly know your product. I know that you are an actor, you might not be a marketer and you might not know a lot of marketer, but you have to do research on your product and your audience, right? If you want to create a good marketing campaign, that is just a basic. So it's the same thing for actors. In the end, you're advertising yourself. You are your own product and you are your own company and CEO. So I scheduled the time with him. He was amazing. He was very kind. It was very quick. We scheduled the time for a month later, which is very quick, to be honest. I think David knows was more time to wait. And we made it happen. Um, the week before the headshots, um, well, I mean, 
I eat healthy all the time, but I'm not gonna lie, the week before the headshots, I like made sure to keep up like a very healthy eating and keep going to the gym, which I always do. I, I try to go to the gym on a daily basis, but that week I made it, you know, my purpose to like make sure that I didn't miss a gym session or anything like that. So I would look my best for the headshots, of course. And then the day arrived, my headshots were scheduled for 8 30 a.m. starting with makeup which means that I woke up at like 6 a.m. I did my whole skincare routine because I, I'm gonna tell you something I don't know if I've said this before I am not a morning person if I wake up at 6 a.m. I'm gonna be one grumpy and to have the biggest eye bags ever then it's gonna look like I haven't slept in years which is not the fact I sleep I sleep it's just it's just genetic it's a thing so I had to do my skincare routine to look fresh and everything I had a good breakfast and then headed to the headshots it was fun. It was fun. It was quick. It was very efficient. I think part of it because Paul is a professional and knows what he's doing. And part of it because, again, this time I knew exactly what I was going for. And let's go into that. What should you go for when you go for headshots? I get that question very often. What are the emotions I should portray? What should I do for my headshots? And the answer is... There is no one answer. <laughs> I cannot tell you what to go for for your headshots unless you are, you know, for example, my student and I know you really well. You have to know that yourself. You have to know what you are best at. You have to know what you want to be seen as. But not only that, there is a big part of it that is, this is what I want to play. And another one is, this is what I look like and I'm most likely going to be at cast. And that was a big debate in my house. Let me share that with you. I consulted with my partner. Hey, this is the types, the things that I'm thinking of. This is what I want to go for and what I want to take my headshots like. And he said, well, I can see that. And you're a great actress. I have no doubt that you can play those characters. In fact, I've seen you play those characters. But those are photos. And if a casting director looks at you, like just looks at you without seeing you act, seeing you move anything, just your face, that is not what they're going to cast you as. Because that's not what you look like. <laughs> he said it. <clears throat> he said it like this. I still laugh about it. He said, you are talented like a Don Julio, but you look like a strawberry margarita. <laughs> I don't know if you guys get that reference or if you drink or anything, but I thought that was very accurate. Sure, I look like a strawberry margarita. I get it. I get it. I have baby face. I am blonde, blue eyes, the stereotypical strawberry margarita. I get it. So what I decided to do is take three different types, which I think is a good amount for headshots. I would not go less than three different types. If you're taking headshots, I would do three minimum. If you want to go for four or five, that's good. I think five might be a little bit too much, unless your agent is like, take five different types. If you're just going by yourself, three to four, I think is a great number. One of the headshots should be most definitely a legit headshot. A legit headshot is a headshot that is for your more theatrical, more dramatic stuff. It doesn't even have to be dramatic. It's just a serious headshot that represents who you are. Just plainly who you are. Then there should be a more commercial headshot. That's the second type. Something that's more uh, wholesome. Something that's more bright. A big smile. You know, something that's more welcoming. And then... You can do a more character headshot. A headshot that might be a little bit further than what you would think that you could play or what somebody that sees you would think that you can play. I think those are very three great times. And that's what I decided to go for. I went for one, my more commercial, bright, welcoming and wholesome headshot, which I also decided to make my more young, teenager kind of, of show, which is Big Smile, nice that kind of thing bright colors it was a pastel blue color then i decided to go for my more legit headshot which is more what i look like on a daily basis when you know on a good day it's light makeup 
very cute which i decided to make it also more like my romantic comedy love interest girl next door i think that those are my main times the strawberry margarita kind of types and then i did my more character headshot we added a little bit more of makeup we added some eyeliner straightened my hair added a little bit of um darker clothes and we went for a more serious character more for like an action movie thriller something that again maybe if you see me the first time you wouldn't think that right away but in a well characterized manner and good makeup I can totally look like that and I absolutely can act in those movies I loved the types that I chose for myself I am so happy that I knew this time what I was doing because the results talk for themselves. If you want to do them, to see them, you can go to my Instagram. They are all posted there. I like the range that the headshots show, how there is the very young me, the more mature me and the more normal me. And, and there is so much in it. They show so many different characteristics for a character. And so those are headshots that I'm going to feel happy using. And that is the goal for your headshots. Paul Smith, by the way, if you are in LA or think about getting headshots, would be the person that I would go to. I am so happy about, again, the result of the headshots, how fast I got them back. I got them back within like 24 hours. And then I got them edited with um, his editor that he works with. And she also was so fast she got them done in like three days nine different headshots so thank you paul um thank you mary and thank you everybody involved in this process for my headshots again if you want to take headshots in la i definitely recommend paul smith if you have questions about headshots what you should do what you should not do you always can feel free to dm me send me a message i will answer your question either private or in the podcast if it's something that everybody would benefit from but those are my biggest tips for headshots three to four headshots have a legit a commercial and a more character one do not do something distracting do not go too far of who you look like meaning if you don't wear glasses and you have pin straight hair do not go with the curliest hair with glasses unless you really 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 want to go for that character shot and that's really something that specifically you want to do i would not recommend going that far out your headshots have to look like you and then when it comes to picking the headshots that you're gonna keep because i was sent 300 headshots and i chose nine out of 300 you have to pick the ones that look more like you and what you're going for you should not pick the ones in which you look more pretty or more glamorous or more model like pick the ones that look most like you if you want to learn more about headshots, get into details and have someone to guide you through the whole headshot process, the Actors Vow Coaching Program just opened doors yesterday, March 15th. It's closing doors in three days at the end of the day on Saturday. In the program, we talk about headshots, we talk about representation, we learn acting technique. And of course, you get me as your personal acting coach to guide you through all that, through auditions, self tapes and everything that you might need in your actor's journey. If you want to join the coaching program, you can go to tavcoaching.com slash start. That is tavcoaching.com slash start. You can go to the link in bio in the Actors Vow Instagram page or on the TikTok page link in bio. You also can join there. Let me know if you have any questions about the program. I would love to have you there. I am so excited to meet the new students and the students who are already in the program are so excited to welcome you. That is going to be all for this week. Next week or the following week, there is a guest. There is a guest episode coming that you will not want to miss. Like always, please follow The Actors Vow on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. That is at The Actors Vow for all of them. Thank you so much for being here another week. And I will see you hopefully next Wednesday. I love you.